First Samuel uh, chapter 12, that, that's our reading for today. Thank you, as, as always, uh, for joining me. You know, First Samuel chapter 11 was really a, a wonderful and, and encouraging read. Uh, Saul, with the spirit of the Lord on him, he renews the kingdom of God, and he exercises great leadership and allows, allows God to use him in a great victory for the people of God. Uh, the people of God, they, they go from frightened and, and weeping and helpless, really, uh, to victorious. And we reference Luke chapter 4 as Jesus references the, the messianic prophecy that's found in Isaiah 61. In those first few verses, as the spirit of the Lord would be on him and, and he would come to deliver uh, the blind and ultimately the helpless. And spiritually speaking, we recognize that, that that's all of us. So this new king of Israel, Saul, he's... Uh, a man of great potential, as we've talked about. And, and we've seen great humility with him. We, we, we've seen him exercise restraint as he chose not to retaliate against um, uh, those critics there at the end of chapter 10. And he chose to give God the glory, um, even in this great victory. And so when we get to chapter 12, the, the great leader Samuel, uh, a prophet of God, a man worthy of, of imitation, he, he's going to, in essence, pass the torch of leadership. He'll um, begin to fade as, as Saul comes to, to more prominence as the first king of Israel. But before he does that, he, he's got some things to say, um, just as Moses did, just as Joshua did. He, he's got some things that he wants to leave with the people. So if you have your Bibles, let's read 1 Samuel, the 12th chapter together. Again, thank you so much um, for joining me. Uh, today. First Samuel chapter 12, it says, Then Samuel said to all of Israel, Behold, I have listened to your voice and all that you said to me, and I have appointed a king over you. Now here is the king walking before you, but I am old and gray, and behold, my sons are with you, and I have walked before you from my youth, even to this day. Here I am. Bear witness against me before the Lord and his anointed, whose ox have I taken, whose donkey have I taken, or, or whom have I defrauded? Whom have I oppressed, or from those hand, from whose hand have I taken a bribe to, to blind my eyes with? I will restore it to you. They said, you've not defrauded us or oppressed us or taken anything from any man's hand. And he said to them, the Lord is witness against you and his anointed is witness this day that you have found nothing in my hand. And they said, he is witness. The same said to the people, it is the Lord who appointed Moses and Aaron, who brought your fathers up from the land of Egypt. So now take your stand, and I may plead with you before the Lord concerning all the righteous acts of the Lord, which he did for you and your fathers. When Jacob went into Egypt, and your fathers cried out to the Lord, and the Lord sent Moses and Aaron, who brought your fathers out of Egypt, and settled them in this place. But they forgot the Lord their God, so he sold them into the hand of Sisera, the captain of the army of Hazor, and into the hands of the Philistines, and into the hand of the king of Moab, and they fought against them. And they cried out to the Lord and said, We have sinned because we have forsaken the Lord and have served the bells and the asteroids. But now deliver us from the hands of our enemies and we will serve you. Verse 11 says, And the Lord sent Jeru, Adam, and Jephthah, and Samuel, and delivered you from the hands of your enemies all around so that you lived in security. And when you saw that Nahash, the king of the sons of Ammon, came against you, you said to me, No, but a king shall reign over us, although the Lord your God was your king. Now therefore, here is the king whom you've chosen, whom you've asked for. Behold, the Lord has set a king over you. Verse 14, if you will fear the Lord and serve him and listen to his voice and not rebel against the command of the Lord, then both you and also the king who reigns over you will follow the Lord your God. If you will not listen to the voice of the Lord, but rebel against the command of the Lord, then the hand of the Lord will be against you as it was against your fathers. Even now take your stand and see this great thing which the Lord will do before your eyes. It is, not the wheat, is it not the wheat harvest today? I will call to the Lord that he may send thunder and rain, and you will know. See that your wickedness is great, which you have done in the sight of the Lord by asking for yourselves a king. So Samuel called to the Lord, and the Lord said, Thunder and rain that day, and all the people greatly feared the Lord and Samuel. Then all the people said to Samuel, Pray for your servants to the Lord your God, so that we may not die, for we have added to all our sins this evil by asking for ourselves a king. Samuel said to the people, Do not fear. You have committed all this evil, yet do not turn aside from following the Lord, but serve the Lord with all your heart. You must not turn aside, for then you could go after the futile things, which cannot profit or deliver, because they are futile. For the Lord will not abandon his people on account of his great name, because the Lord has been pleased to make for you a people for himself. Moreover, as for me, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord by ceasing to pray for you, but I will instruct you in the good and right way. Again, he says in verse 24, only fear 
the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart. For consider what great things he has done for you. But if you still do wickedly, both you and your king will be swept away. Samuel, he has some things to say to the people. And Samuel here reminds them, he doesn't sugarcoat it. You made a really foolish decision. You already had a king in God, but you insisted on a physical king. And you'll remember back at the beginning of all of this, God through Samuel, he warns them of exactly what's going to happen. And we're going to see all of that come true, um, unfortunately. But this morning, I, I want to bring to light some highlights of this speech that, that I think will, will be helpful to us if we'll allow them. We'll get some insight here into the character of Samuel. You know, in those first five verses, Samuel reminds the people that he has led them really with great integrity um, in very much a blameless way. No charge, it seems, uh, against him um, withstand. And, and the people acknowledge this. And I'll just say this, what a marvelous thing. To have the ability to look back on his life and stand before the people with confidence and really declare without dispute that he had served them blamelessly, that he had served them with integrity. He'd not defrauded nor taken anything um, inappropriately from them. He had treated them right and served them right. And they knew this and they acknowledged this. And I'll just say this, every single one of us we all lead at some level. There, there are those in, in our lives who, who are looking at us for direction. Some of us um, serve in, in capacity as leaders in, in the kingdom. And may we always lead with integrity. And at the end of our lives, may we have the ability to look back without regret. May we have the ability to say that, that we have not in any way defrauded those whom we are serving. And that was Samuel. But you know, like all great leaders, Samuel is concerned for the people moving forward. And he, he really, you feel it when you read this. He really wants what's best for them. And like Moses and, and like Joshua, he takes the people back. He reminds them of what God had done for them. But then he makes an observation. And we certainly saw this in past readings. If you look back there at verse 9, after reminding them of all that the Lord had, had done for them, and how he delivered their fathers from the land of Egypt and gave them Moses and Aaron to lead them. Verse 9 says, but they forgot the Lord their God. And, and I'll just remind you, and we've talked about this before. Brethren, when the people forgot the Lord, I think this is a major takeaway from our reading thus far. Destruction and misery and calamity came next. May we never forget the Lord. May we never forget what's been done for us. May the mercies of God, brethren, be the compelling force in our lives that, that drives us to live for him, to serve others for his glory. And, and that's why daily Bible study is so important in our lives. That, that's why the first day of the week is, is so precious to the child of God, because it's on these occasions that that we're reminded of the Lord, we're reminded of his power, we're reminded of his grace, we're reminded of his love, of his mercy, we're reminded of his promises that, 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 that have been made for the faithful, but also reminded, um, as scripture reminds us, of, of his divine wrath reserved for, for those who reject him. You know, with our history, um, of forgetfulness, with our propensity to forget, let, let's be most intent, intentional, to, to do what we can to never forget the Lord. In verse 14, uh, Samuel, he, he really lays out, I, I think for us, the prescription um, for success, uh, a formula that, that, that we have talked much about and, and the great leaders of God have, have echoed with, with Moses and, and with Joshua. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 12, at, at verse 14, Samuel says, If you will fear the Lord and serve him, and listen to his voice, and not rebel against the command of the Lord, then both you and also the king who reigns over you will follow the Lord your God. If you won't listen to the voice of the Lord, but rebel against the command of the Lord, then the hand of the Lord will be against you, as it was against your father. So simple. Such a simple way to live. Fear the Lord. 
respect God, revere God, with an understanding of who he is, with an understanding of what has been done for you, stand in awe of him. Fear displeasing him. Serve him. Listen to him. Put it all together. Fear God, serve God, listen to God, and it will be well with you. May God bless us in these endeavors. May we never forget the Lord. Would you pray with me, please? Our Father in heaven, Father, we are most thankful for you. Father, for all of our blessings, we are most grateful. Father, we pray moving forward that you would see fit to continue to bless us. May we use these blessings to glorify you, to bring honor to you. May we use these blessings to serve others. Father, bless us with opportunities to share your word. Bless us with opportunities to serve one another. Bless us, Father, with opportunities to worship and to praise you. Father, we're mindful of those who, as a result of some of our current circumstances, they are hurting, they have lost. Be with them, Father, as only you can. Provide us opportunities to be there for them. Father, bless us. In Jesus' name we pray.